There I was, last Pokemon in hand, staring down my rival's Grovile. I was fairly certain this was the end, but I had to try my very best. The sacrifices that I made along the way had to mean something, right? Clenched my teeth through my last ball. Kippy could handle this, I thought, even with the type disadvantage. The battle began, and while I tried to keep Kippy alive, there was... Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Maybe I should explain this journey from the beginning. My name is Jack Ixie. Welcome to my first Pokemon Nuzlocke. What's a Nuzlocke, you might ask? Well, it's a Pokemon challenge run where if your Pokemon faint during battle, they cannot be used again. You also have to name each Pokemon so you become attached. So losing them feels like your heart is coming out of your chest and somebody is smashing it over and over and over and over and over and over. Finally, you have to catch the first Pokemon you encounter in a route, regardless of how terrible they may or may not be. A man of culture such as myself has to try a challenge like this. As we all know, I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> I decided to attempt this in Pokemon Emerald, as it's the version I know best. Like every story, our story begins with my mom throwing me unceremoniously into the back of a moving van. While keeping the boxes from squishing my head, I received a call from one of my dad's good friends. He asked me the existential question of, am I a boy or a girl? At least this professor is smart enough to remember his child's name. My bumpy ride comes to a close as I'm thrown from the van with the boxes into Little Root Town. I quickly got acquainted with the townspeople, including a hobo. Seriously, there are only two houses here. Where do you all live? The town's eternal guardian of the Pokemon list tells me to help a grown man run away from a Zigzagoon. Once I rifle through his things, I find my pride and joy. Kippy. After saving this so-called Pokemon professor from a trash panda, he gives me the Pokedex spiel and sends me to inflate his daughter's ego. I hone Kippy on some trash pandas and some worms before watering her Toriko into an early grave. We return to the professor, and he gives me some Pokeballs as a reward before sending me on my way. On the first route, we catch our first Pokemon, a Wurmple. We name my child, AKA Juan. We continue through to Petalburg, where our dad doesn't give us a hug or explain why he doesn't come home anymore. Something going on there, dad? Instead, he has us help some new trainer named Wally catch his first Pokemon, a Ralts. Must be nice to catch a good Pokemon. After Petalburg, we catch another Wormpole, which we name Maggot. Who doesn't last long? <laughs> and in the nearby Petalburg Woods, we catch another Pokemon. <gasps> What's that? A Wormpole! This one we name Larva, I guess. Well, in the woods, some creep is looking for Shroomish, and then he uses a 12-year-old as bait against a gang member. Luckily, he left his knife at home, instead just wanted the battle. We defeat him handily, and my child evolves into Beautifly. We reach Rustboro City, where the first gym, headed by Rocks. We certainly weren't ready to put on the red light, so it was time to hit the grass, do some training. We caught a Poochiena named Boo, but he was taken from us too soon. You'll be missed, my beautiful bouncing boy. As a replacement, we find a pair of premium quality earbuds at a price that doesn't break the bank. Raycon, the Whistler, not sponsored. With our team buffed up and our new compatriots, it was time to face Roxanne. Roxanne proves more challenging than expected, and she sends my child off to Worm College a little too early. But Kippy comes in clutch and cleans things up, and we got our first badge. We meet up with the creep from the woods again, and this time, he wants us to help get a package back that he lost. So we rescue an old man's only reason for living, his wingle, Pico, from Team Aqua's Grunt, and recover the missing Devin Goods. The creep takes us to meet his boss, who gives us a phone our parents wouldn't buy, since we're only 12 after all. Instead of just using the phone, he asks us to deliver a letter to Steven in Dufert and a package to a local shipwright in Slateport. I guess the mail service really sucks if they have to recruit random 12-year-olds off the street to deliver packages. It's like 18th century London out here. <laughs> the only way to get to the island of Duford is via boat, so we hitch a ride with Pico's old man from earlier. Duford proved to be a big speed bump on the adventure. We managed to catch a few new recruits, Punchachu and Barry. 
Our greatest challenge here is Brawly, the doofer gym leader. He's a fighting type, which we aren't particularly good against. We wiped the floor with his first two Pokemon, but his last Pokemon was a different story. It KOs Punchuchu, who was a powerhouse, then proceeds to almost kill Kippy. To give Kippy time to recover, I end up having to sacrifice the rest of the team. <sighs> but Kippy pulls through and narrowly defeats Brawly, netting us the badge but at a great cost. With our noses to the ground, Kippy and I trudge through the caves in complete darkness, make it to Steven, deliver his shitty ass letter, and take the boat all the way to Slateport. In Slateport, Kippy and I start picking up a new team. First, we net a seagull, mine, and then we land a magic carp that only knows Splash, named Maybe Dose. We train up the team, and we remove some unwanted guests in the local museum, and kill some local people obsessed with water. Hashtag Hydro Homies. While training, I stray a bit too far, and May sneaks up on us. In the words of our lord and savior, Illidan, WE ARE NOT PREPARED! As we face May, lord of the Black Temple. Starting to feel confident, we take out her first two Pokemon with ease. But then she sends out Grovile. It nearly kills Kippy in one shot, and I have to resort to using mine and maybe Dose as shields. There I was, last Pokemon in hand, staring down my rival's Grovile. I knew it was the end, but I had to try my best. The sacrifices we made along the way had to mean something, right? I clenched my teeth and threw my last ball. Kippy could handle this. I thought even with the type of disadvantage. The battle began, and while I tried to keep Kippy alive, there was nothing I could do, and Kippy went down. That was it. The run was dead. Despite all the training and hardship, Kippy, my child, punch at you, I let you all down. Now I have to trudge back to mom and tell her what went down. Forever trapped in failure, where we work at the local Red Crawd Aunt, taking the orders of the rich and famous trainers. Hearing them laugh over some battle, flaunting their Pokemon. <laughs> While I slowly drift into darkness, I will never escape. <laughs> well, that reality sure had a dark ending. Yikes. <laughs> we'll have to try this again another time. <laughs> This time, we'll come out on top. I am sure there is a trainer in another reality we can inhabit. Hopefully this time, we don't get three worm pulls to start off. Hope you guys enjoyed the run, and I will see you next time.